Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I have mentioned this scripture in passing before on several occasions, but from a different light. And I believe that tonight God wants to give us another light of understanding. I pray to God that your minds and spirits will be quickened to have understanding of what I'm going to share tonight. Because if you do understand this sermon tonight, you're going to start walking in a freedom in your life like you have never imagined a human being would ever have. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, for who saw the sun sets free is free indeed. The reason why people are not free is because the freedom that we give them is freedom that has been cushioned by men, designed by men, framed by men, taught by men, instructed by men, prayed over by men, and that is why people don't have total freedom. The Bible says, for if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The revelation of truth defines our degree of freedom. You're only as free as how much is revealed in truth. Not just how much you know. Because we have many people who know, but the knowledge of things on their lives is simply forms of things, but not the very substance and power of the life that they profess as Christians. Somebody shout hallelujah. But tonight I want to open your spirit, your eyes, your understanding to something so deep. And that's why I said, all the day I've been praying, God, I pray that they may understand. I pray that they may understand. Your life will never be the same again. Now, when the Bible says in verse 3, but I fear. In fact, he begins by saying that, could you bear with me a little in my folly? In other words, I might sound foolish in the things that I'm going to say, but bear with me for a moment. Some of the things that Paul in this scripture is speaking about, they look like they are a bit crazy to people without understanding. But he says, you know what, bear with me for a while. I want to bring a certain understanding to you. Paul brings a very distinct fear in the verses 3. He says, I fear. He says, lest by any means. As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. That was a fear from an apostolic concern, from an apostolic perspective. This man, Paul, we're talking about, the Bible says, and to whom I'm least of all things, he said, was given unto me this grace to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. He had an immense grace to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. In fact, at one point as he's preaching, as he's sharing, it becomes so overwhelming and he says, oh, the depth of the riches of the glory of God. If you want to know a man in scripture who revealed deeply the riches of the glory of God, that was Paul. It was given him to define that, to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery. There was a mystery that was hid from the ages past and now revealed. There was a revelation of the person of God that was very alien from the people then that professed to know God. And then Paul, by the Spirit, sees something. And he honestly says, I fear. Now, if Paul, the man who laid the foundation of the faith, he said, let no other foundation be laid. Now, I need you to understand how powerful it is. When the Bible says, let no other foundation, how deep the statement is when a man says, like a master builder has given the grace to lay down the foundation of this gospel. And he said, and no man can lay any other foundation save on this foundation. You can only build on Paul. You can't lay under Paul. You can only go higher than Paul. You can never go deeper than him. Did you understand what I just said? 
because he lays the foundation of the gospel. The Lord took him as deep as a man could ever go. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says, look, you take it how you build on, but don't start another foundation. Don't ever start another foundation. It is pride to go beyond divine purpose. Hallelujah. And it was clearly ordained by God that when it comes to Paul, he was given the grace to live. He called himself, or he was called the master builder. Hallelujah. And he said, I have laid the foundation. He didn't say another one also should go deeper to lay the same foundation. No. He said, I have laid the foundation and let another build their own. You can only build on Paul. You can't build under him. Somebody shout hallelujah. What an authority. What an apostolic mandate it was. So we only go higher. We can only build higher than him. So it's possible for the church, for anybody to build higher than Paul. Because it was ordained of God that the foundations be drawn on him. And this man, with this understanding, all foundations says, I fear. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, I fear. He has a genuine fear. He fears. He says, listen, by any means, as the serpent beguiled it through his subtlety, he says, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. He says, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might bear with him. In other words, they will come and could come people who present another Jesus. Who speak of another spirit? Who minister of another gospel than this one? He says you bear him yourself. In other words, you pay the full price of receiving another thing. And brethren, many Christians received another Christ. Many people claim and profess to be believers, but they received another spirit. And if I go there, I could speak the whole night about it. Because there is just no way. The Holy Spirit can be in a person. And they cannot display the pattern of the Spirit. It's impossible. So it's not an artist for somebody to say, you know what, I have the Holy Spirit. No, no. Which Spirit are you talking about? Because you can define a Spirit that was not given. And a man can preach a gospel that is not the truth. No wonder people are bound. No wonder people listen to the word every day, but they continue to be bound. No wonder people believe and believe, and, but they continue to be bound. And sometimes when the truth now comes, they have to unlearn 20 years of sitting under the wrong teaching. They have to unlearn 30 years to change the whole thought line and process. To see things as blue because they are blue, because for so many years they were convinced. These things were purple. Are you following what I'm saying? Some people who fight truth, they don't fight it because it's wrong, no. Some of them fight it because they've never read it anywhere. It was not in the textbooks of their theology. And so they limited God to how they know him, to how they assume him, to how he was told to them, without even questioning the authenticity of their teacher. So the student became like the master, but when you look at the student, which now is the master and in their times, you weigh everything about them and you question, is this the life that is spoken of in scripture? And many times the answer is no. And you know what now? Frustrations come through. People get frustrated in the faith. People give up in the faith. People draw back in the faith. People compromise even the most convicting lines of their life. In the faith. Why? Because many times we have presented things that appear like truth. But they are not true. Men are not free. Now, you can't claim what Paul has said until you see what Paul saw. You can't say, I fear. Until you see what really scared Paul. Some people can quote that same scripture. But when they start speaking... Their fear is alluded to ignorance. 
It's not in the revelation of the vision and sight the man of the spirit had when he was saying that the Satan in his own subtlety like he beguiled Eve he should corrupt the minds of men from the simplicity which is in Christ. And that's the sight I pray by God you get. I pray that you will see this. I pray that your eyes will see this. You see, long ago, not long ago, somebody came to me and had questions, right? And the questions they were asking are typical. These are questions I hear Christians ask every time they seek godly counsel you understand and some also because of the deception prior some also go to men of god for counseling like they're going into shrines they're going for which doctor to tell them their story so he can fix their short issue and then go away and that's the attitude we have about god and some people have gone counseling to counseling room, apostle to prophet, teacher to evangelist, pastor to man of God. You understand everything. They've gone everywhere. They've seen every face. They can even tell you, I met so and so, I met so and so, I met so so and so. I even went to this counseling. Apostle, by the time I come here, I am tired. One time a woman came into the office and said, I told God, you're the last man of God I'm seeing. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> yeah. She said, I told God, you are the last man of God I am seeing. If he doesn't fix me, I'll find my way. <laughs> what do you mean by you find your way? But she said she'll find her way. But I understand what she was talking about. Because she's moved. Like she's going to shrines or which doctors to fix something that has failed to be fixed. Now I'm going to show you my fear. So this person says, you know what? Me, I have come to talk to you about something. I said, what? I said, I have tried everything. I have tried everything. But I have failed to get a job. I'm frustrated. I have prayed. I have fasted. I have consecrated myself. Separated myself. Sanctified myself. Holiness is here. Righteousness is imputed. I have, I have prayed for years, Apostle. I've spent many, 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 many years without a job. I'm tired of struggling. But how far is she from someone who says, you know, I have believed God for marriage. Now I'm 40. I'm still believing 45. You understand? I'm believing 50. I'm still believing 60. You understand what I'm saying? I prayed, I've done everything. Now when they say that, it means they've met everyone, tried to pray, fasted, went, you understand, sowed seeds, did everything, but it failed. What of the pastor who come and tell you, pastor, man of God, I have done everything I know to build ministry. I have done this, I've gone here, I've gone to this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that. In fact, one time a man of God came to me and told me, you know what, if I get machines, my ministry will just do like this. He did like this. My ministry will just... <laughs> Jesus did have machines. Somebody shout hallelujah. But he fed more than 5,000 men without machines. Another one, I have met pastors. One day somewhere in the corner, a pastor said, you know, me, my problem is money. My problem is money. I don't want to lie to you that I have the anointing. I have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I have this. I have that. I have what I need. Eh? Now. Amen. You'll see what I will do. Are you hearing me? But you see, he's not getting the point. <laughs> Did all begin with money? Are all successful because they had money? Which came first? Uh, answer me, which came first? The Holy Spirit, God. So if you have God and the Holy Spirit and you say that I don't have money, then you don't have God. I don't know, you, you understand what I'm saying? But you see, this is the reality of the world that we live in. More so if you are in a third world country, like Uganda, and your spirit has not been elevated 
to the Zion in which you live. Somebody shout hallelujah. So I understand where they're coming from. I see where they're coming from. I'm talking about things that you prayed for over years and years and years. But have failed to realize them. You have failed to see them. It is because in part, I'll tell you the truth and confess before all of you, that in part, even us as ministers, we are the ones that minister corruption to men. As Paul says, that their minds are corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. Who is corrupting the minds of men? Those they listen to. Sometimes we create a certain God that isn't. When Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2.17, he says, So we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ. He knows that there are people which corrupt the word of God. He knows it. He says we are not of them which corrupt the word of God. We speak it in its sincerity. In the sight of God, he says, speak we in Christ. We don't speak outside the man. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go back to that. That's why I tell people, if you're a student of the word, there are certain things you have to watch out for. For example, if you go in scripture and start to look for every part in the Bible that has in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, not of Christ, but in Christ, it will amaze you. He said, we speak in the sight of God, we speak, he said, in Christ. In other words, our bearing is truly defined before we even articulate these oracles. He says, if a man should speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. We don't just speak the things that are, we speak the things that become sound doctrine. The things that are both by commandment and permission. Paul says, I speak this not by commandment, but by what? By permission. There are things the Spirit gives us the liberty to articulate to men because God has qualified us to speak this thing in Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is how the faith is built. Some people think they're going to run away from the reality of knowledge. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Do whatever you want in this world, but you'll still come back to seek knowledge. Go to every prayer meeting, go to every deliverance service, do everything. But God will still tell you, you will know the truth. And the truth shall make or set you free. You will know. It's the knowledge of truth that defines our degrees of liberty. And there are people who will leave this world and die without having tested an ounce of the true liberty of the spirit. Because many times in this deception and corruption, we have also defended the gospel in a false picture of what men call freedom. Yet they are not free. So you find a man and ask him, what is freedom? And he thinks freedom is having a meal. Freedom is doing what you want, when you want, and how you want it. They don't understand the liberty of the spirit, the law of free men. You see, the judgments of God reconcile to that law. He understands that we are judged according to how much freedom is given us. But many people don't even know that they are bound. Why? Because they are not bound by the things normal men call bondage. They are bound by things today the church calls testimony. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are bound by the things today the church calls testimony. People say that, wow, wow, that's a testimony. And sometimes you look at them, some people, and what they call testimony is actually bondage. Why? Because their eyes have not seen the end of the matter. That is why eternal life is to know. Eternal life is to know. It is to go to the end of every matter that you consider the broadness of God's purpose in everything you call testimony. In Romans chapter 1 verses 21. I'm still explaining the fear. The Bible says they knew God. But when they knew God, the Bible says they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Did you hear that? They glorified him not as God, comma, neither were thankful. Listen to those two statements. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. 
And the Bible says, but they became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was what? Was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They zeroed God to a corruptible image. They professed to be wise and became fools. They knew God, but they did not glorify Him as God, neither were they thankful. So you ask yourself the question, how does corruption come? Because the challenge now is to corrupt God, to create, to relate with this God as a corruptible thing. Corruption must have entered your heart first. Do you agree? You understand what I'm saying? And so even though you know God, you glorify Him not as God. The only way man will glorify God wrongly from the knowledge of the revelation he has of that God is if he has been showed the wrong way to glorify him and worship him and relate with him and connect with him. And so because our minds and understanding are alluded, we relate with God with vain imaginations and the heart is darkened and foolish. And even though men appear to be wise every other day, a certain thing on them is looking foolish. It's looking foolish. Now, you enter some churches and even the preachers look foolish. That's the truth. If the Bible says you should speak as the oracle of God, there are things you can never speak on the pulpit. There are words you can never get out of your mouth on the pulpit, unless you're a fool. There are things you can't speak with this mouth. When all people hear from you as a man of God is that you are an oracle. That means everything you're speaking, God is speaking. Do you understand what I'm saying? And some people are abusive on the pulpit. So that's God abusing people. Insulting men. You understand? And some are happy. Because they also see a certain way. There is a fear that is coming back to the body of Christ and it is coming. Where certain men won't just open their mouths and speak. No. They will be weighed. Give it a little time as the preachers of truth are rising up. They will be weighed. Believe me, they will be weighed. They will be weighed. Until to get to a point where even to step on the pulpit you will first pray. So that by the time they get there, they revive the place. You will never get used to that pulpit unless you don't understand the responsibility of the lives of men. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, how have they changed this? How has it changed? How did the corruption come in? How were their minds corrupted from the simplicity in Christ? Because if you understand this, you will know exactly what Satan did to Eve. Because when Paul is drawing that picture, he draws the allegory of Eve and the serpent. He says the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. He's saying the very thing that Satan placed in front of Eve is the very thing that he places in front of men. But sadly now, we place it in front of men through some pity. Are you following what I'm saying? Some pity. So he says men are corrupted from the simplicity. Corrupted, 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 corrupted. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22. Amplified version. He said, strip yourself off. This is Paul talking to the Ephesians. He's telling them, don't be like the men of this world. Don't be like the men of this world. Don't be like the people of this world. Don't be alienated from the life of God because of the darkness that is in your heart. Because of the ignorance, the blindness. You see, that's why the Bible says it speaks of also, even in Ephesians, he speaks of a certain blindness and darkness of the heart. Praise the Lord. 
She says their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is beclouded. They are alienated and estranged from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the ignorance, the want of knowledge and perception and willful blindness. That is deep-seated in them due to their hardness of the heart and the insensitiveness of their moral nature. So he tells you in verses 22, he tells you, strip yourself from your former nature out of and discard your old and unrenewed self which characterized your previous manner of life. That means before you were born again, you had a certain manner of life that was of a certain unrenewed nature. It was unregenerated, he says. And the Bible says, and becomes corrupt through what? Corrupt through what? Lusts and desires that what? That spring from what? From delusion. Praise God. From delusion. And he says, and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. That means when you become born again, you get a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Salvation changes your attitude. Somebody said hallelujah. Say amen. And he says, and now you put on a new nature. He says, the regenerated self, created in God's image, Godlike. This image is Godlike. It's Godlike. It's like God. And he says in true righteousness and holiness. So he's saying men are corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. Like the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. And men are corrupted through lusts and desires that bring delusions. That means lust leads to corruption. If you want to corrupt a man, create lust in his spirit. Create lust in his spirit, in his soul. Put lust in his soul. Put lust in his mind. What is to lust? I'm talking about covetness. To covet, to desire, to have a longing, to have a wish of something you want to have. That is the bait Satan has kept on men all these years, and they don't seem to understand it. Don't you remember how the serpent came to eat? What did the serpent tell him? The servant told if God knows that the day you eat of this fruit you shall be like unto God, knowing both good and evil. Now, what is the last place on each soul? The last place on each soul is you're not like God. You don't know the difference between good and evil. So eat this thing. Are you hearing me? And you'll be wise like unto God. That's why the Bible says the woman saw that the fruit was good for food. It was desirous, pleasant to the eyes, and able to make one wife. She got a vision. The devil cast a vision on her soul. And as her soul lasted over a thing it desired and coveted to have, because man was convinced they didn't have, or at least man didn't know that they didn't need, man fell and ate the fruit. But if you go so deep seated in the heart of Eve and ask yourself, why did Eve eat the fruit? Satan put a preposition in front of her of something that was so good but she did not have and she needed to reach out to her by doing an action. So Satan is subtle like that. He's smart like that. He's crafty like that. As long as human existence is, if he can only create lust in the heart of man, Corruption will always be on us. And so the fall of man was a fall from consciousness. It was a fall of consciousness. And now man is conscious of things that we're not supposed to be conscious of because everything that God has provided for man to the satisfaction and fulfillment of man's substance is no longer in existence because God has gotten the man off the place from where he provided for man. He gets him out of Adam and throws him in the world and tells him, okay, sweat with your brow to eat food. And now man desires to work for food. Desires and lusts for things. You will understand me. Just, let's just go slowly. Because if this was the reason why our mother Eve fell, and Satan knew it was the one lie a man would swallow, he will throw it in front of man every day until the end of humanity. The script is the same. The cast changes. 
that people change, but his mind of dealing with humanity has never changed. Like the serpent beguiled Eve. We are also corrupted. Are you hearing me? Why? Because sometimes, even us as ministers, we cause men to lust. Now, when you're talking about lust, some people think lust, you're just talking about, you know, you know, sexually being attracted to someone. That's one of them. Are you hearing me? But not all of it. The whole picture, even if it's not evil, but your mind covets it. But your heart desires it. You have opened a door for lust. Are you telling me it is wrong to desire? Is it wrong to like something good, to covet something nice? No, no, I'm going to explain where the line is drawn. So that I can reconcile that question with what God is trying to tell us. In James chapter 4, verses 1, he says, Where do you think wars and fightings come from? This is James saying, why is there a war in the world? Why do people fight each other? Why are wars and fighting? And he says, they come from your lust. It's your lust that were in your members. And the next verse says, you lust and have not. You see that? You lust and have not. Because what the devil does is, when he places lust on a man, and a man is convinced that he needs something and covets something and desires something and stretches out his hand to reach out to it. Satan pulls it a bit like this and leads him to where he wants him to go. Who has understood what I just said? That is why there are people here, the more you try to get something, the more it runs away from you. The more you become desperate for something, the more it becomes harder for you. The more you're desperate for marriage, the more it becomes harder. The more you're desperate to get a job, the harder the job becomes. And then there's a funny kid who just graduates and they tell him, we got here a job and says, I don't want to work. <laughs> then he stands like, no, mommy, yeah, I don't like that job. Okay, you can work with your aunt in the UN, even that one, I don't want it. Okay, you can go with your aunt, work with your uncle in Wild Health Organization, even that one, I don't want it. And then there's a Christian who thinks, shake labor. I received the job. I received the job. I received the job. And Satan is doing like this. Job. Hey. Job. Job, job. You don't want a job? I want job. 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 Demons, come. Job. You, you understand what I'm saying? Man. 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 <laughs> man. Pray, man. Money. Money. Smell it. Aha. <laughs> and physically, you're like this, attending Fanero. But in your spirit, you're like... He says, you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Even if you do what, you will never get it. You stay desiring and coveting it. Because the devil enjoys you there. In that way, he has enough steam in the engine of your heart to follow him through to the end. And many, it comes to destruction. He says, you lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. He says, you fight and woe. That means because you can't get this, you start getting it into a fight. And some with a very corrupted delusion quote scriptures like the kingdom of God suffereth violence. And the violence, take it by what? By force. Tell your neighbor we are going to take it by force. Tell your neighbor we are going to take it by force. Tell your neighbor, we are going to take it by force. Pray. 
Whether the devil wants or oh, you don't know, he will release you into your marriage. Whether the devil wants it or not, he will release you into your next job. Whether the devil wants it or not, he will release you into your next career. Fire! And he tells them, because you ask not. Huh? Huh? You mean it was that easy? Yes. He says, ye ask and receive not. Because ye ask me. How? Because you ask that you may consume it upon your last. Why do you want a job? Why do you want a child? Why do you want a man? Why do you want your ministry to grow? Why? Why? Honestly, why? Because even me, I want to be like other people. But I'm tired of being alone. Why? Who told you you are alone? Why do you want money? Say that even me, I can and all the reasons they give are lust. They are lusting. And God said, you will not receive because you're praying the wrong way. You're asking the wrong way. Now, it doesn't matter which deliverance service you go to. You're asking a miss. Your end is lust. It's not in the revelation of the responsibility of the things you're asking for. I repeat, it's not in the revelation of the responsibility you are asking for. Lust does not understand responsibility. So why do you want money? Why do you want a life career? Why do you want to go to school? For what? And your end is because I also want to be like others. Others who? Who have money? You mean the people you see who have money have it by mistake? You mean everybody has the same mindset that you have about money? Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you following me? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 1. He says, I am Simon Peter, servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them. Listen, to them. See, Peter is not for all. Anyway, he says, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus. So how have we obtained precious faith? Through the righteousness of God, isn't it? So Peter is talking to men who have obtained the righteousness of God through faith. And the next verse says, he says, grace and peace be multiplied. He says to those people, grace and peace be multiplied. In other words, with that person Peter is talking about, he says, grace and peace will be multiplied. He says, grace and peace be multiplied. Be multiplied. He says, through the what? Gnosis of epignosis. Through the epignosis of God and our Lord Jesus Christ, the advanced knowledge of God, not just the progressive knowledge, because sometimes, sometimes, if gnosis is not confirming epignosis, it may elude men back to the last we're trying to walk out of. Now, what do you mean? Let me explain. Gnosis is progressive knowledge. Epignosis is the complete and perfect knowledge of God. If progressive knowledge, gnosis, is not confirming an affirmed experience of epignosis, gnosis is not simply giving answers to the epignosis already in you. Whatever is placed before you as gnosis, you can last over. Because you don't know that gnosis is a confirmer, he's not an affirmer. Progressive knowledge is not meant to affirm things to men. Progressive knowledge is meant to confirm things to men. 
if I come and I'm a man of God and I say, Rakatala, you're going to prosper. I prophesied on your life. Oh my God, you know, from the day you said I'm going to prosper, I prospered. No. You were prosperous even before I said it. I just said it for the manifestation in the physical world. The prophetic of present New Testament is a confirmer. It's not an affirmer. The word is an affirmer. Who has understood what you said? The word affirms. The prophet confirms. Who understands what I'm saying? Because there is nothing he or she can say on your life that is not already in the word. It's not there. There is nothing that will ever speak on your life that you can't find in the promises of God. You just didn't know it was there. But now you turn us as witch doctors and we become witch doctors. <laughs> now, he said... Grace and peace be multiplied. You see, multiplication of grace and peace is in epignosis, right? And the next verse says, according as his divine power, now listen to the thing that takes away last, according as his divine power has, 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 has. answer me, has, his divine power has, his divine power will, does it say his divine power should? Does it say his divine power might? Does it say his divine power could? No, he says his divine power has given unto us some things, a few things, most things, common things, Ugandan things, things that fit in the space of your country, things that fit in the space of your color, things that fit in the space of your, of your career, things that fit in the space of your job, things that fit in the space of your height, things that fit in the space of your weight, things that fit in the space of your understanding, things that fit in the space of your wisdom, things that fit in the space of your network, things that fit in the space of your collections. No, he says he has given us all things, he says, that pertain unto life and godliness through the word, the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. And the next verse says, listen, whereby, because we know he has given us all, because we know, because we know, because we know we have it all, because we know we have it all, he says, whereby he has given unto us exceeding and great precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped what? You escaped what? You escaped what? You escaped what? You escaped what? The corruption that is in the world through lust. Tell your neighbor, I escaped it. Natimuka. Yes. Let me explain what I mean by that. You can't tell me that believe God for a husband. He said, none among them shall lack a mate. You can't tell me. Believe God for provision. My God shall supply all my earth. You cannot tell me. Believe God for healing. For he that knew no sin became sin. That we've been dead unto sins by living unto righteousness. And he says, by his stripes, ye were. We have it all. So stop lasting. Tell your neighbor, I have it. Hey, I have it. I have it. You might not see it, but it is there. You might not see it, but it is there. And that is why I tell you, act like it is there. Because if you don't, you're going to last. And if you last, we shall lose you. Right? Because the devil is telling you, you don't have a man. Man, man, Echimusa comes, man, Echimusa comes, man, but I was desperate. The Bible says he maintains my lot. Whatever is yours is there, and it's yours already in Christ. So even though they knew God, 
They did not glorify him as God. How do they glorify him? Neither gave thanks. Who has understood what I just said? Because they, they knew God, but they did not glorify him as God. Neither were they thankful. How do you give glory to God? You stop asking for a man. You thank him for a man. You stop asking for a job. You thank him for a job. You stop asking for healing. You thank him for healing. You stop asking for children. You thank him for children. You stop asking for a car. You thank him for a car. You stop asking for money. You start thanking him for money. Sarakata. Zekere Baba. Tell your neighbor I know God. Tell him I know God. And I glorify him as God. He says they that come to God must know that he is. And the what? The rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I am not poor. Even if there is no money in my pocket. I am not lacking. Even if I don't have oh. Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor glory to God. Nothing takes away from you anything. All things are mine. I said all things are mine. I said all things are mine. One time I found a young lady. Very sad. They had stolen her phone. And I said what's wrong? She said they stole my phone. I looked at her I just walked away. I know why she's crying. She thinks she has lost the phone. All things are yours. All. Oh. Oh. If you lost it, just thank God for your next one. Come on, shout hallelujah. Stop crying over spilled milk. If they chase you from the job, thank God for your next job. By the time they give you your termination letter, don't leave the presence of the guy who gives it to you without giving thanks. You look at him straight in the eye and say, I thank God because I'm going to my next destination. If he walks out, another will come. Come on. Somebody found hallelujah. Bring glory to God. If they're going to help you, wonderful. If they don't help you, God will send another helper somebody shout hallelujah i had fainted if i had not believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living tell your neighbor i will never fail it is too late don't be deceived by what you see this is only a temporal thing that cannot be compared to the weight of glory that is coming in my future i look not at the things that are seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal and i am drawing from the eternal things to know the one true god and his only son jesus so how do we corrupt men from the simplicity in christ we make them think that their blessing is in the future. Their healing is in the future. Their job is in the future. Their everything is in the future. Why? Because their physical eyes can't see. Praise God. If you do this, if you give, God will, will make you rich. God doesn't make men rich because they are givers. God has made men rich. That's why they are givers. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. A man who is not a giver doesn't know that they have. But we create lust and tell men, I saw the million. Can you believe? And then I got a hundred million. Then a woman lusting gets all her money. You got a hundred. You saw the million and then got a hundred. Then she gives in the what? In the basket so that she can also what? God is not sports dirty. He doesn't need your chameleon. Your million. Do you understand what I'm saying? He doesn't need your 50k. He doesn't need your 20k. That is why I can't fundraise in Fanero. If you don't, we will die. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not corrupted. I'm not corrupted. He said, Somebody said, Hallelujah. Somebody said, Glory to God. You might be here and you don't have a job yet. Glorify God by thanking Him for your job. Glorify God by thanking Him for your healing. Don't ever at any one point say, I have, Apostle, I have looked for jobs. Listen to you say, who corrupted you? He says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication come out, proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the ears. That when people hear you talking, they know you're a woman under grace. They know you're a man who is graced and favored. That is the opening of sight. Did you know that? No. The opening of sight is the revelation of grace. That everyone who hears you can say you are graced and favored. You remember Paul? Paul the apostle? Do you remember when he was stricken blind on his way to Damascus? And three days he's praying. And the Bible says a man goes to him. You understand? And says, God has sent me to open your eyes. What was the name of that man? Hananias. And the Bible says, and scales fell off Paul. And who was the first person he saw? Ananias. And what is the literal true translation of the name Hananias? It's Kananias. I said Nanias. It means Ananias. Ananias. Kananias. It means he that gives grace. That was the first vision. That was the first vision. Also, that's why he was a preacher of grace. Because it was the first thing he saw after the receiving of sight. When a man's sight is given, he beholds the spirit of grace and favor upon his life to know that everything God has given you because you believe Jesus is not because of what you've done but it is because of what he has done at the cross be free from the thought that you need anything you don't need anything you're asking a miss the lasting man is the one who says I don't have you have it all he says for whether Paul or Apollos whether things present or things to come he says for all are yours and you are Christ. Sharakata. Never allow anybody to corrupt you. You see, you're here. You don't have a job. Who told you I don't have a job? Because you don't see it, you think I don't have it. Who told you I'm not healed? Because you see me limping, you mean I'm sick? Who corrupted your thinking? Oh. Somebody just take a minute or two and just talk to God. Now you understand why we sing. All my life you have been faithful. Now you understand it? Because someone can say, but you, you're singing, Apostle, we can see. But now me, do you know what I'm going through? Who corrupted you? Come on, talk to God. Oh, I will sing of the good man. Okay. That's people who see. All my life you have been faithful. Oh. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I have made Come on, talk to God. Tell him, God, I thank you because you're good. You have provided for me your good. You have done me well because you have given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Like I said last week, no consciousness to learn. You're my friend, 
come on, talk to God, another 15 seconds. Talk to God, another 15 seconds. Speak forth the manifestation of those things that you know you have in God. The Bible says in Philemon 1 6, the communication of your faith becomes effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you to the day of Christ. He says, be confident of this, that he that began that good work in you, he shall see it to accomplishment to the day of Christ. I cannot be corrupted into love. I cannot be corrupted into the thought of sickness. I cannot be corrupted into the thought of nothingness. I cannot be corrupted into the thought of disease. I cannot be corrupted into the thought of failure. I cannot be corrupted into the thought. I cannot be corrupted. Acknowledge every good thing which is in you which is in Christ. everyone to raise their hands wherever you are just put up your hands in the air now sometimes the anointings I feel I don't know what to call them but sometimes on days like this as I'm preaching I feel certain oils fall I feel certain anointings fall I feel them on my life too and sometimes I can sense or many times I sense when God is elevating individuals Holy Spirit will you move and touch them vindicate the conviction of my heart Holy Spirit touch somebody see I don't have a name for what I'm feeling but whoever it comes on they understand it Come on, somebody talk to God. Something is falling for a worshiper. Hey! Something is heavy. I feel it. I feel it. Somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Rebrando reke reke braka para razeleke. Sirelele broza. Things are going to manifest on your life that are undeniable. People will not deny that God is with you. Oh! People will not deny that the anointing of God is on you. People will not deny that the power of God. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. People will not deny that something is upon you. I see your star shining bright and bright. I see feathers fall on your life like never before. I see nations look for you. Oh, Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Some people thought this was your end, but they are just about to realize you had not even begun yet. Tonight God is keep starting you. Oh my God, oh my God, confirm this thing to somebody. Confirm
from what I see, Holy Ghost. You can do it. You are God. You are God. You are God. You are God. Now I want you to give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty hand of the praise. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of the praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of the praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of the praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of the praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of the praise. Give the Lord a mighty hand of the praise. So if you came with sickness in your body, in the simplicity of faith, receive your healing. Now, receive your healing. Whichever disease it is, receive your healing. Thank God. That job is manifesting. Thank God. That career is manifesting. Thank God. Those travel documents are manifesting. Thank God. Why? Because they are not in lust. They are in the understanding of their own responsibility. They are in the understanding of the responsibility of blessing. You're not just getting it. You're getting it because you carry the responsibility of that thing. Man, Uganda is going far. This nation is going far. This nation is growing faster than men could ever think. Things are happening here that are going to waken up the whole world. Clap your hands with Jesus. Come on, clap your hands with Jesus. Clap your hands. Now, if you are there and you have never given your life to Christ and tonight you think or feel that God is drawing your heart to salvation. You're going to repeat these words after me. You're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I believe that you died and rose again and you shed your blood for me. Tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.